If you've got persistent back pain then you need to watch this video. Stop going to the chiro and endlessly getting clicked and clunked and manual therapy and then feeling like you're no better off six months down the line. Watch this video, understand the information, implement it and you will improve and get better. But lower back pain is an epidemic and it affects most people at least once in their lives. Often there is no trauma or injury, the pain just starts. So what is the pain and what is the cause of the pain? What can you do about it? Let's start by understanding what pain actually is. The definition of pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. We have to look at the biopsychosocial model, which takes into account emotions, sensations, cognitions, which is how you think about pain, and these all affect the persistent pain experience. And it's a good thing that we know this because if we know this, we know what we can do to influence our pain and you can work on strategies to help and improve these different areas that then improves your pain. Noxious stimuli activate sensory nerve fibers called nociceptors and these sensors send these potential danger signals to your spinal cord via nerves, basically saying there is potential damage that you might want to do something about. The spinal cord will then decide if the message even needs to be transferred to the brain for you to pay attention to. Nociceptors respond to physical, temperature or chemical stresses. Sometimes nociception does lead to pain, but sit for too long and your bottom nociceptors will send signals to the boss to get you moving. There was no damage, it's just that the nociceptors got irritated. If you put your hand near a fire, then the nociceptors will warn you that you should move your hand, but that does not mean that you have actually damaged your hand. Over time though, you can start to have more pain with less nociception and you can even have pain with no nociception. Nociception is good, but it doesn't have to lead to pain. Like many alarm systems, it's better for the alarm to be more sensitive than less sensitive. So if we look at the analogy of, it's like a lookout from a boat sending a message to the captain of the ship, that there is a light on the horizon. The captain's response will depend on where the ship is, what their orders are from the government, and what has happened in the past. This is very similar to pain. When the messages get to the spinal cord, the messages can be amplified or decreased. Looking back at the ship analogy, if the lookout has been told there are pirates in the area, or he is nervous or has ignored something in the past which he's got in trouble for, he's more likely to increase the urgency of his message. Nociception works the same way. The spinal cord can alter its sensitivity and how much signal gets sent up to the brain. So the brain decides. The brain is like the captain and decides what to do based on your past experiences, based on your beliefs, your attitudes, your emotions. And this is why for the same nociception, you can have very different pain experiences. So one analogy gets talked about quite a lot is by a Australian physio who was walking through the bush one day. It was in the bush and it felt like a brush, so he just carried on walking. And two hours later, he looked down at his leg and it was massively swollen up and he'd basically been bitten by a snake. Ended up getting to hospital, getting sorted out, and he was fine. But years later, he was in the same sort of area of bush and he felt an absolutely excruciating pain on the side of his leg which he then uh, looked down for and has been brushed by a thorn when he was walking through the bush. No major issue, but the pain he felt was excruciating. The past emotional experience of having that snake bite had kept in his system and his brain was on high alert because it recognized the situation he was in was similar to last time. And obviously he wanted to make sure that there was nothing major going on. That is a simple way of explaining how emotions, past experiences can have an effect on how much we physiologically feel pain. The captain can send messages of panic and hypervigilance, but the captain can also send messages not to worry. We understand what we're dealing with and there is no need to overprotect. With persistent pain, the captain and the whole ship stay on high alert the whole time. Dysfunction does not equal pain. Remember, pretty much every assumed dysfunction, whether that be posture, tightness, weakness, structural degeneration, can exist in people without any pain whatsoever. 96% of athletes younger than 22 will show some changes on MRI that some people call abnormal. But since everyone has them, how abnormal can they actually really be? 37% of 20 year olds with no pain have disc degeneration in their spine. Degeneration is like wrinkles on the inside. Damage and changes in your body are not wholly irrelevant to pain, but there are a few things that we do want to remember. The pain is really poorly related to damage as mentioned before. You can get out of pain with no changes to your structure. Damage or wear and tear might interact with other things in your life that you do have control over and you can make a difference to. Feeling of being out of place is very common, but with Without big trauma like dislocation, the joints are very rarely out of place, but it feels like they are, and why, why is this? 
Well, pain does weird things, one of which is control how you perceive your body. We all have a map or a representation of our body within our brains, within our minds. With persisting pain, that map can become distorted. It's like spilling coffee on your map and making the lines blurred and distorted. By training and using physical activity, you can teach your mind to create a more precise map again and learn about your body parts and positioning and where they should be. So just like your brain will link experiences together, if you think of certain smells or songs giving you good or bad feelings, pain is actually the same. You have associated certain movements with pain and then we want to do something about that association. So gradually exposing yourself to things that are a little bit painful for you can start to rewire those associations and over time you can have less pain while doing these same movements. In a centrally sensitized state, a normal input leads to a larger magnification of that nociception and that is influenced by both the tissue irritation, also by stress, sleep, catastrophizing, fear or anxiety. All these things play a role. So what can we do to reduce pain? We can decrease the stresses or the things that sensitize or contribute to our pain. We can build up our tolerance, our threshold for pain perception. Tissue injury, beliefs, physical impairments, coping strategies, emotional factors, lifestyle, health and social factors, physical habits and your meaningful activities will all influence pain. The alarm system can become more sensitive, but the alarm system can also be made to be less sensitive and you can address a fear of certain movements or take approaches to make you healthier like exercising, seeing friends, being more physically active, resuming your hobbies. Sometimes we have a little bit of normal pain, but then we can be told that there's some muscle that isn't working, your posture's awful, you're out of alignment, or you're told that it's bad to have these normal aches and pains. These secondary things can make our normal aches and pains worse and amplify them. And that is how pain persists and how pain is multidimensional. Look, you are not weak. Do you know that the average spine can withstand more than 2,000 pounds of pressure? Do you know that the average spine is stable and capable of handling huge amounts of bending and stress? Exercise, physical activity, and things that make you stronger can be helpful for pain. Look, changing how you view your body from viewing it as weak or frail to becoming capable and adapting and being strong can really help with your pain. But this adaptation takes time. Exercise, movement, resuming meaningful activities, learning about pain and addressing the aggravating activities in your life all involve stressors that help you change, but this is done over a period of time, it's not overnight. If you've had pain for a long time, then you've adapted slowly over the years to this pain. And having patience and knowing that progress can either be fast or gradual is really important. If we think about an overflowing cup analogy of pain, where your pain is only present when the cup overflows, Inside that cup can go physical stress, anxiety, fear of movement, work stress, anger, depression, joint changes, social isolation, frustration, lack of support, false beliefs, tissue damage. You don't need to fix all these things to start getting out of pain, but pain occurs when we fail to tolerate and adapt all these stresses in our life. In general, we say that the cup is filled by these biopsychosocial factors in our life, in other words, all areas of our life, and we need to keep that cup from overflowing to stay out of pain. You can work on lots of different things to reduce the, the things in the cup, and you can always also build a bigger cup. Write down one thing in the comments right now down below that you're gonna change in your life that's gonna help you to change your persistent back pain now. For more information on this, there's a fantastic resource which I took a lot of this information to make this video from by a physiotherapist and chiropractor called Greg Lehman. The link for the ebook which this information is taken from so you can read a lot more detail about it will be in the description. It's a phenomenal book and I would thoroughly recommend anyone who's got persistent pain to read this book and stop feeling like you're out of control, stop feeling like you're powerless, you can do something about your back pain, you just need to read and understand this information and start implementing that plan of action to start looking at where you struggle and where your problems are and then working on those and that will gradually make you feel better, make your back pain less and make you improve. If you wanna learn about how MRI scan early on with back pain can actually be harmful, then click on this video.